It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy and Alex and I are here. The old gang's back together to talk about distracted driving and why there might be a law against using your cell phone in your car at all. We'll also talk about uh, the iPhone 5 and why it might not come out next year and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. Mac Break Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 277, recorded December 13th, 2011. The lips are all pointed the wrong way. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by GoToMeeting. The holidays, bad weather, and sick days could keep you out of the office, but not from getting work done. For your free 30-day trial, visit GoToMeeting.com and use the offer code MACBREAK. And by Carbonite Online Backup. Automatic, continual, and unlimited backup for your computer files for only $59 a year. Try it free at Carbonite.com and use the offer code MACBREAK to get two bonus months with purchase. And by Ford. Featuring available voice-activated sync with sync services, which enable you to customize your driving experience with personalized news, traffic, and directions. Check it out in the new 2012 Ford Focus and at Ford.com slash technology. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers all your Macintosh needs. <laughs> and here he is. I don't know why I'm talking from Scotland. I'm just back from Paris, and it shouldn't sound like this. Mr. Andy Anotko from uh, beautiful Baston, where the sun is shining, and the superheroes are out. Yes, uh, featuring the Just Ice League, uh, part of the rebooted DC Universe, they only respond to threats above the Arctic Circle. So, <laughs> and life is calm. The Just Ice League. It started off as a typo at DC Editorial. They decided, you know what? Jim Lee did a great drawing of this of this concept. Let's just go with it. <laughs> the Just Ice League. They're all about new ideas at DC. <laughs> I finally got it. There you Good go. to see you. I haven't been here in, uh, I don't know, how long. Thank you for yes, you, holding you've down You've been off gallivanting. It. Yes, I've been doing... Actually, I think they say galavanting. Oh, oh, there you go. Probably. You travel has broadened you. <laughs> broadened me in more ways than one. I'll talk about that later. Hey, and hey. also here from Japan, ladies and gentlemen, where he has 59 megabits up. Don't even ask about the down, Mr. Alex Lindsay. I'm thinking of backing up the internet while I'm here. <laughs> I, I brought him a couple extra drives, and it uh, should take some time in this morning to finish it off. Now, that's hotel internet. Is that typical, you think, for uh, everybody? It actually is. I mean, a lot of, uh, I don't know if it's typical for everyone in Japan, but in the hotels, it's pretty common to get 10, 20 megabits. This is actually really good, and I think it's a little bit better because it's, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so my God. <laughs> So you have the entire pipe for the hotel. We better get this show over before everybody gets up at 6. It's 4 a.m. Alex, thank you for getting up to be here. <laughs> it's my pleasure. I missed you guys. And I, and I missed the ukulele. I missed all the other pieces. And I'm Alex, actually, it, in, it, you know, it's Wednesday. So it's, um, you know. It just, it just occurred to me. We better make sure we finish the show before all those lonely Japanese businessmen yes, wake up exactly. and start downloading things. <laughs> I want something for my pillow girlfriend. Um, what are you doing in oh. the land of the rising sun, Mr. Lindsay? Uh, we're manning a couple. Uh, we're manning a couple of days of streaming for uh, Salesforce.com. So they're they're doing uh, CloudForce Japan. So we're um, we got our crew here, and um, I'm one of one of many. Did you ship um, everything, uh, all the gear out, or did they have gear? Half a ton. Holy! We checked. You checked it. You gotta see, you gotta see the face. You gotta see the looks on on uh, on United, you know, Airlines <laughs> uh, when we show up with literally it's twelve. Pelican cases. You saw them. You've seen the Pelican cases. I have. Office. So, so there's 12 of those, and um, they're big and they're heavy, and they all they're all 69 pounds. You know, so so they're they're all, and we actually actually have the weights like taped onto them in the front, and um, so if you're you know if you're Starlines Gold, you can uh, take up to three bags per person on the same ticket. So if you bring four people, you get 12 <laughs> bags, <laughs> under 70 pounds for free. <laughs> did you have? Did you pay for overages? So the guys had to pay for Japan. It, it got a little painful. Um, when yeah. we went to uh, it, we we went to New York and we did it a couple weeks ago, and we actually paid about we paid for the weight. We don't you don't pay for the extra. We didn't pay for extra bags because wow. we had up to twelve bags for free. Uh, but we did pay for the weight, and the weight was about eight hundred dollars charge, which is seems awesome. like a lot, but it's it's 
it's not much when you consider that it's it literally when I say it's a half a ton, I mean it's like it was eleven hundred pounds so of of stuff that we checked. And, and that's um, cameras, a switcher, uh, streaming gear, couple, a whole basically a, an entire television stu stu streaming studio. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. So, so it's um, so anyway, so it, you get used to it after a while. You know, it's just you get used to you you, you get picky about the carts. So there's like, you know, the, we don't like the ones in Tokyo because in Narita, they have these little lips on the front, which means all of our bags are all tilted the wrong way. So we, you become a connoisseur of, of airport cards. <laughs> the lips are tilted the wrong way. Well, I'd, yeah. probably they never thought about that, did they? No. Show title. No, they, 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 <laughs> we can't have a show title this early. <laughs> hey, Canada, they, we're, we're just marking that. That's all we're doing. Just marking it. Just saying. Lips are pointed the wrong way. If it could, if, if after, nothing after, else occurs. Attributed to Alex Lindsay. <laughs> In Japan, the lips are all pointed the wrong way. I'm, I'm, I think that is a show title. I hate to say it. I, I, I don't see anything better coming along. Okay. So this is the show, if you're just tuned in. It's a little discursive beginning because I haven't been here and I'm, you know, just <laughs> getting caught up. This is the show where we cover Macintosh stuff and Apple stuff. And there isn't a whole hell of a lot to talk about this week. <laughs> it's hard to do shows like this, news shows, in December because really everybody's gone home <laughs> at, at Apple. Everybody's gone. Everybody's out out of uh, this. But we have some. We'll find some. We'll find some things to uh, to talk about today. Anyway, I missed you guys. Thank you for doing the show without me uh, last week. Was did Andy host the show last week? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And who produced it? Because Eileen was in Paris with us. Um. Well, did you Andy do the work? pretty much. Andy did the work on the Thank content. You. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Colin Thank you, Andy. ran. Colin ran the board, and Nicole um, prompted him to do the ads. We've got so. a deep bench. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. It only made me appreciate how difficult Eileen's job and Leo's job is. Yeah, yeah. Eileen mostly. I just sit here. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit here. All right, I'm going to start off with, it's kind of not really an Apple story, and I just put it in. You guys haven't seen it yet, but, uh, but the chat room brought it up, and I think it's a good idea to mention this. The U.S. government's transportation safety experts recommended today to ban all American drivers from using portable electronic devices, including cell phones, even if you use a hands-free device. What you, the crap? <laughs> what the hell? You could still use GPS navigation devices, and in an emergency, you could use your cell phone. The NTSB also urged consumer electronics manufacturers to figure out a way to disable the functions of all portable electronic devices within reach of the driver when the vehicle is in motion. <laughs> Excellent so, plan. Just they die should, they, when the GPS... They should, also, they should also find a way to disable the air conditioning controls, the heating controls, the windshield wiper controls, and everything else that causes you to take your eyes off the road for less than a second to simply turn on deactivate or adjust the device why That's didn't they ban cassettes real hard thinking that was the real that was the killer was so, you drop a cassette on the floor you bend down to get it you stick it in the thing and meanwhile your <laughs> car is plowed into the side of the road i think that's the killer h the uh, national highway traffic safety administration says distracted driving killed 3,000 people in 2010 how many automotive deaths were there in 2010 more than 55,000 3,000 of them were caused by cell phones. We're not even that distracted driving. Well, distracted driving. Does that, that include, uh, that's, that's, that's a catch all category, isn't it? Yeah, that could be the cassette. Oh. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that they really ought to ban radios. If they're going to go this far, they really that's need to the pro I think that's the problem. And makeup. Women makeup. may not wear makeup. And uh, drive throughs Oh, you no know. more eating. I saw a statistic, uh, something like 75% of everybody eats in the car. And I, I'll tell you what, I had... Uh, a double double in and out, double double protein style yesterday. There's no bun; it's just lettuce. It is not easy. Your hands get so slippery you can't actually steer. <laughs> you know, so the wheel just goes in your hands. So I don't recommend that. We should ban that too. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, guys? I mean, I, look. I mean, I think there's no question that it's dangerous to text while you drive. Right. So let's like it's. If people are actually distracted by their device while driving, there are certainly ways to control that. Uh, unfortunately, the best way to do it is to simply make the, just like drunk driving, you can't really put a breathalyzer on every single car that ships to make sure you cannot step into the car while you're drunk. But you can make sure that if you were ever uh, caught uh, drunk driving, the penalties are, are so severe that it'll put the fear of God into you. For they the same are, reason, too. It's expensive. Yeah. yeah. And the, the things that really are truly distracting, like I think we can all agree that 
even with voice to text, you cannot text while driving. You cannot do it. I don't think you can even really have an extended conversation on the phone through a Bluetooth handset while driving and not be affected somehow. But all those things leave digital breadcrumbs with a phone company. So if there is an accident, anybody can simply subpoena those records and find out that, right. you know what? While you, you were on the highway, you were not stopped at a traffic light. There's no chance of uh, of you saying you texted while uh, while you were in a safe condition. I don't think that you should punish people for simply reaching out without even looking uh, looking at the at the iPhone, tapping this big red button that says play, pause, or next track to skip over. You know that one Allman Brothers song you don't like that found found its way onto your iTunes library when it's on shuffle play. That's not distracted driving. Just like. I don't. I don't see why they're saying that it's distracted driving when you're operating a phone, but it's not distracted driving when you, your eyes are off the road for a second and a half while you're trying to get the get the temperature of the car adjusted the way you like it. It's nuts. Oh yeah, and my my, my father's a lawyer, and he said that when you have a car accident, the very first thing you do is subpoena the phone records. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just like that's just like you know, it's just like gathering the information. You know, like check the skid mark. You know, like the the skid marks on the road and see what get the pictures of the cars and subpoena the cell phone records because that's going to be, uh, you know, a, a, a very high percentage of them are going to be connected. I, I should that. point out that it is legal to smoke a cigarette while you're driving, distracting you, potentially killing yourself and others. They're not talking about banning <laughs> cigarettes while driving. Yeah. Uh, 35 states, and by the way, I, nobody's contesting it shouldn't be legal to text while you drive. That's not what this law says. This law says you shouldn't even be able to have a Bluetooth, you shouldn't be able to have a Bluetooth car phone. You shouldn't be able to talk on the cell phone at all while you're driving. That's what they're saying. Mm. So that would ban, you know, having, I get in the car, my phone is automatically hooked up to my, my, uh, my Ford Sync, and I could press a button and I could talk. That's banned. I could answer the phone. That's banned. 35 states ban texting while driving. I mean, that, nobody could test that. Uh, but, na but you know. Well, that's why I like the, the blanket term distracted driving, because there are all kinds of ways to improperly uh, operate your vehicle and not be focused on the job of driving. I just don't think that you should simply say that any time you reach over and tap a button on your phone, you are distracted. Again, unless, the, unless they're willing to ship cars without any single buttons of any kind on the dashboard, they just can't make that argument and say that they're doing right. something that's logical. Maybe this is all a plot by Google to get autonomous vehicles uh, into federal law. I'm willing to go for that. Well, yes, I, know, I, don't, I don't know what anyone would do in L.A. if they, if they took their, their phone. <laughs> I mean, you, you said, when you sit on the 405, there is a, like, I couldn't understand why everybody I work with in L.A. would call me all the time and never email me. And uh, I finally realized that when I'm in L.A., you're on the 405 and you're moving 10 miles an hour for the next hour and a half. That's all you can do. Exactly. And, and you got to get work done. And so I'll never forget taking a drive with Steve Eichers, a salesman at KFI. And uh, he, he puts his BlackBerry in the thing. And it was, it's an hour to get anywhere in L.A., always. And he maybe 40 sales calls while he's on the <laughs> driving down the highway. And I never felt at risk. I think Steve was a good driver. He's paying attention. Anyway, I, I don't I don't know what to make of this. I think the chances of Congress in any you know passing a law against this is especially in an election year is next to none. <laughs> but I just thought I should bring this up. And you can't you know you can't really fault the NTSB. Their job is to say here's what causes accidents. We think this causes you know three thousand people died last year, so you should ban it. But again, that's a tiny fraction of the number of people who die in auto accidents every year. I don't know what the uh, last I should see auto. Accident deaths. <laughs> well, and typically, safe search on, please. <laughs> Auto accident deaths in the U.S. in 2010. Let's see if they can. Google, tell me. See if the Google can find this that. This looks like a job for Siri. <laughs> Siri. Actually, I wonder, maybe Siri would be faster. Let's see. Siri, how, how many people I got to get out of the habit of calling Siri. I always, let's see, U.S. ranks fourth in automobile accidents. It's, it, it, I'm sorry, Siri. I, I, I'm done with you now. Thank you. Go away. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Siri doesn't work so good in France. I just want to point that out. I tried it with a French accent and all, all kinds of things. <laughs> this is weird. Wolfram Alpha responds with a complete summary of, of this question. Data not available. Oh. <laughs> How could that not be that available? It seems like, yeah, I don't know how that turns into a, not a, I'm sorry, we'd like to search the web for that. It turns out to a, I have an answer for you. The answer to that is, I, I don't know, your guess is good as mine. Toad, Toad Sloth has, I think, has it nailed in the chat room. He says stupidity causes accidents, but you're not banning stupidity, are you? 
According to the World Health Organization, 45,000 people died in automobile accidents in 2002. That's a fourth in that category. You know why? China had a quarter of a million automobile deaths in 2002. Holy cow. I don't feel so I don't feel so bad now. Holy cow. I don't know what the uh, this, this is this is 9 years ago. That's the that's the closest uh, stat I can find, but I don't think nine years ago a whole lot of people in China had cars. So a quarter of a million people dying in China in auto accidents, that's like almost everybody who had a car. <laughs> and they've been driving for less than 18 months. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not going to make any jokes about Chinese drivers, I promise. But that's India, 199,000, and then Indonesia, 51,000, and then the U.S. 40. 45 is down a lot because the last time I looked it was 55,000 a year. And that was probably pre-2002 because I don't check that stat a lot. Uh, enough. Just thought I'd bring it up. I, I just a chance for us to get a little irate, a little hot under the collar. We're going to continue on talk about it's, iOS. It's a little. It's a, I mean, both you and Alex are back after after a layoff. This is sort of like an amuse bouche. That's it. To sort of you know Precisely. Set the set the palate for the rich protein filled. You go to you go to McDonald's. They give you an amuse bouche in Paris. I mean, it's like everywhere yeah. you go, you don't start a meal without an amuse bouche, which means I guess it looks you, like, it looks like a French fry, but it's actually <laughs> amorized peas. Exactly. On a bed of ketchup foam. Exactly. They're very into molecular gastronomy. At your, at some, not all, it hasn't made its way like to the West Coast yet, but on the East Coast, it's all molecular gastronomy at the McDonald's drive through I saw, I was in Paris, I looked at a McDonald's in Paris, I had a big sign outside that said, the French hamburger. <laughs> I mean, that's like, uh, I guess they, that's why you go to McDonald's if you're in Paris. We couldn't figure it out. Why would you go to McDonald's? Because you want an American French hamburger. I don't you understand. see it. It's funny you see it. You, but it, it, McDonald's is a fascinating <laughs> uh, place. In, in all, every country has its own little. Oh yeah. You know, McDonald's kind of morphs. You know, there's there's here in Japan. I, I haven't ever, ever eaten in McDonald's in Japan, but you walk by and look at the at the the menus, and they're you know they have all kinds of more Japanese fare, and um, it's tempting to go in and just try that. But then there's a ramen shop next door, and you yeah. realize that yeah. you're in Japan. There's actual food. Yes, but exactly. the, the the greatest Dunkin' uh, I would I would almost go back to Korea just for the Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> like local variety of donuts they have in Korea. <laughs> it's red, red like you see you see Wasabi like hundreds, so, donuts. Well, no, it's it's a regular Dunkin' Donuts like if there's all the same signage, all the same like little wire wire bins, all the same like the white uh, the, the 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 pink like paper, and then you see this heart shaped donut that's filled with red bean curd. And you say, oh, ha, ha, ha. I mean, it's filled with beans. I'm like, oh, my God, this is like the tastiest donut I have ever had. I, I'll share the pictures. Some of, the, some of the best pictures from that trip were just, oh, my God, the airport donut shop is really awesome. <laughs> I am went to it for four square uh, here right away. At the risk of continuing this completely off-purpose conversation, I went to, big, uh, to have a Big Mac in Beijing. And I've had a Big Mac in France. The Big Mac in France has, they call it the Royale, has some weird sauce on it that is not American. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it ain't Big Mac sauce. In in Beijing, it's ex precisely exactly the same. Yep. I think there's a commitment in in China to quality, and uh, the French are not gonna. They said no. <laughs> this is not how we are going to make it. You could take your Big Mac sauce and put it where the sun don't shine. And no, they do not have Chipotle's. All right, we're gonna take a break. Come back. Alex Lindsay is here. We have actual actual Mac news. <laughs> Alex Lindsay is here from Japan. Konnichiwa. Kenichiwa, where he's going to have a kimchi flavored donut in a moment. Mm. Mm. Uh, from Baston, where the sun is shining bright. Today's the day. It's a good day. Beautiful day, Mr. Andy Anatko. And uh, I am Leo Laporte, and we will have more in just a moment. But first, I got to tell you, uh, as, as both Eileen and I start to go. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. We got the Lewib, the Lewib cold. We got le cold. Le cold. <laughs> That's actually what they call it. No, they call it la grippe. La grippe. La grippe. We have la grippe, but it's that time of year. It's the most cold time of year. You're traveling. Things can keep you out of the office, like la grippe. But well, but what? everyone on the plane was sick. Oh yeah. No, it's just that time of year. It's like the. <laughs> I don't feel too bad. I actually feel. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting not, it. I'm not that bad either. I'm fighting it because our American antibodies. Are, are a match for any French yeah. cold. They're just going to fight it off. Yeah. It was just uncomfortable on landing for me. Did your ears, like... It was the sinuses they heard. Oh, for, yeah. Oh. La rhume. La rhume, they call this. Le rhume. 
<laughs> you say that, it actually feels like you have a cold. Le rire. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all of this to say that uh, the bad weather, the, the bugs, the holidays can really keep you from going to work, but doesn't mean you can't get work done thanks to go to meeting. It is hard to hold meetings this time of year. People just aren't around, but, you know, it's it's hard every every day because people will travel. They're, you know, Alex is in Japan. Andy's in Boston. I'm here in Northern California. That's why when we need to have meetings, we use GoToMeeting, and I, t I totally recommend GoToMeeting from Citrix. You can host a meeting from your computer, Mac or PC, should, should you be foolishly using a Windows machine. And uh, your attendees can join from anything, including an iPad, an iPhone, an Android phone. They can download the free GoToMeeting app, and they're in the meeting. HD faces means they can see you in beautiful, full, high-def video. It's just fantastic. And if you've got a cold, you know, just to point, the, point the camera out the window. Let them enjoy the beautiful scenery where you are. It's that good. Go to meeting.com. Try it right now. If you click the Try It Free button, or do we have a special URL? No. Click the Try It Free button and use the offer code MACBREAK. You can try it free for 30 days. Go to meeting.com. Click the try it. For, that's that orange, orange, orange button right there. Orange button right there. And uh, and then say Mac break is the offer code. 30 days free. And I think you're going to love this thing. It is awesome. Go to meeting.com. The best way to meet online. Mac or PC. And now with the addition of iPad, Android, and iPhone devices, they've really got it down. Oh, my, my web is slow today. I don't know why. Maybe it has la grippe as well. Go to meeting.com. Try it today. So let me look and see. There is a little Mac news. The FCC is reviewing AT&T's Spectrum purchase. This is uh, such an abstruse topic, and yet I think it's very important to uh, address. FCC uh, has restarted the clock, which means it has now 180 days, six months, to review this. So it's going to be a while before this happens. AT&T... Uh, attempting to buy a ton of Spectrum for its LTE implementation. Um, it doesn't matter to iPhone users because we don't have LTE, but <laughs> it does make you wonder if we're going to see an LTE iPhone come uh, whenever June. First of all, do, Andy, do you think there will be they'll, they'll get back on schedule, or is September the new iPhone launch day? Um, I think they're really waiting for 4G. Uh, I don't. Right. I think that's going to be the killer feature, and I think that it's worth holding off a delay, a, a, a release until then. It certainly looks like ATT is not going to have that sort of U.S. penetration for 4G by right. certainly not until the summer at the earliest. So it's now that they've established a precedent that uh, that they've broken themselves that useless idea that every summer there has to be a brand new iPhone. Uh, now they are certainly more available uh, as an option uh, on in September. It's the same reason why one one of the reasons why they decided to stop doing keynotes every January at Macworld Expo mm -hmm. because it was a totally artificial deadline right. to have something interesting to announce. So I, I think that we're sort of broken from the entire release schedule. I'm not even so sure that we'll see an iPad announcement in the first couple of months of 2012 either. So There's another advantage to not having a schedule. If you have a schedule, then for the three months before the release date, the, mm -hmm. you're not going to sell any. So a lot of people, I think, are saying, oh, I'm going to hold off on the 4S because the 5 is going to come out in June. Well, maybe you shouldn't. A you agree, Alex? Yeah, no, I, I actually think, I absolutely think that, that keeping people guessing is important. because I know a lot of us get into a, a mode where we have some sense of when the next phone's coming out and everyone just, or, or the next computer. I mean, they talked about the fact that the Mac Pro, for instance, isn't selling very well. That's because all of us are certain or right. at least wish, wishfully hoping that we're going to see a Thunderbolt-enabled Mac Pro so no one's buying one. And we're trying to hang on to these as, as long as we possibly can. And I think that, that that happens with all their product lines. That's an interesting point. So if so... Being tied to that schedule is really a terrible idea. So why 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 not mess with it? Fool around. <laughs> Keep people guessing. I think it's I think it's good. I think that the challenge, of course, is that you, you do have a production schedule too. So that's the other side of it is is that there's your you know that there is a certain churn to things. But I think that definitely rotating. I think we're seeing Apple start to experiment with right. when things are released. I, I, we're not going to get them all in the same month every year. And, and is it pretty clear that the iPhone five? has been tested, has been prototyped, is kind of could have been even announced maybe this year. But I think, Andy, you're right. They're, they're the only reason for an iPhone 5 is LTE. 
you know, they, they've Apple's shown no interest in larger screens. They've shown no interest in all the other basic features that keep rolling out on uh, uh, on Android phones that seem to differentiate one model from another. So I think that they're. I don't think we'll see something called the iPhone five until they're confident that four G right. is going to be available to most of the iPhone users out there. Right. All right. Well, there you go. And I think that this is pretty clear because the FCC has got is given itself another six months to review the. Uh, th this is. Uh, 700 megahertz spectrum that Qualcomm uh, held. I don't know what were they using. Was that for their that silly uh, TV thing that Qualcomm did that flopped? I can't remember what they were using that for. But in any event, uh, AT and T wants it, and uh, FCC says maybe in six months, which means I think we don't see an iPhone in June. But that's just my thought. Of course, yeah. it's not just AT and T. It's Sprint and Verizon too. Verizon's moving pretty quickly to get their LTE out. Right. I mean, Verizon is great. If you want 4G, right. uh, if, if you go Verizon, you're not going to be unhappy with it. But uh, Apple always wants to make sure that there's a consistent iPhone experience, at least within in each individual country. The uh, Another question, though, is kind of interesting, is would Apple even consider a skip year for a major model upgrade? <laughs> they almost did that last year, didn't they? Came, came down to the wire. I mean, a yeah. lot, I mean, I, there, there was a point in August when I was wondering, could this be the year they just, uh, could this be the year that they do uh, a Jan end of January major iOS hardware event, not just an iPad event, but this is going to be the, the month where they're going to introduce the new phone and the new iPad at the same time. Uh, of course, that didn't, that was just sort of in the back of my mind. It didn't work out to be true, but uh, Apple's the only company that could even try to do that, uh, the competition among Android handsets is so severe that if you don't at least have the perception that you're continuing, continually coming out with new hardware, you really miss an opportunity. Although 2012, I think, is going to be the biggest competition Apple has ever had, even for the iPhone. Uh, Android is still trying to get its way out of the tar pits, but uh, I think that uh, Windows Mobile is, uh, Windows Phone is really going to have a great showing in 2012. Uh, Mango is a great update. Uh, whatever they've got in store for uh, for Windows Phone 8 in 2012 could really put it on the same footing, not as uh, iOS 5, but maybe as iOS 4. And that really could be the handset that makes a lot of people think, gee, I really, really wanted an iPhone, but a lot of the basic just holistic features that I really, really liked about the iPhone are also present in their own ways in, in this Windows Phone device. So it might not be smart for them, to, if they're considering it, it might not be smart for them to take any years off from now on. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pressure, isn't there, right now? Um, and, and, you know, I just got the new uh, Google uh, uh, Galaxy Nexus phone, um, which is... Uh, you know, ice cream sandwich. Google's got a big I, uh, up, I almost said iOS. A big <laughs> OS update. Um, so, but I, but, but traditionally, Apple has not paid attention to what other people are doing. So, somebody in the chat room made a very good point, uh, which is it's not just AT and T. I mean, that isn't really the issue, is it? Because not only do they have three carriers in the U.S., but they have carriers all over the world. Uh, maybe what they're waiting on is not. 4G availability, but uh, a battery efficient yeah. 4G chip. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things. If you've got good 3G, I think in most cases, uh, that's probably sufficient. Yeah. Or also, 4, 4G isn't a terribly compelling advantage right now. It's best. It's a great opportunity. It's a great option for people who are going to be spending a lot of time using that phone just as a wireless uh, hotspot uh, and, and an opportunity where it's tethered to the to the wall, where it's drawing power. Right now. Uh, Every single company, excuse me, it looks like every single company meters their 4G so that you can get really great speed, but you just can't use it all that often. You kind of want to keep it up at 3G speed. Also, like you said, I mean, it's not a very power efficient mode, so it burns out your battery really quickly. Every time that every time I travel, I'd happen to have a 4G phone in my pocket alongside the iPhone, and I almost always keep it in 3G mode just to make sure that I've got something left at the end of the day so I can actually do something with it. Right. Yeah, I know that my, with my uh, uh, Galaxy S2, I find that the battery life is pretty, pretty uh, short if I'm using it heavily. Um, you know, it's, especially if I'm using you know something that's going to really hit the 4G, uh, it's a, it's a pretty uh, pretty heavy hit um, there. And I think that you know I think that in some ways these S versions. I mean, I I, I, I like my my 4S. It's kind of a skip year though. I mean, there's, you know, there's not a lot. Of, you change a couple of components and you you know, update the iOS, and and those those are kind of the the skip years, I think, for for the system. So I think Apple already has that built in to some degree. Uh, there's just suckers like us that you know, of course, feel like we need to have the new phone. The people the people who are being made fun of in the new Samsung ads. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Actually, have I asked you guys about those ads? I don't think so. I don't know. 
So I think they're very funny, but uh, they really are kind of a slap uh, to iPhone users. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're funny, and I, I, I feel sorry for any iPhone user who's offended by it. I guess exactly so. As, if you identify but, with the hipsters in there, you're probably yeah. something wrong with you. And, and, if, and if, you, if you want to, like, re use it to re-energize your, your own built-in sense of Apple secure, right. uh, superiority and arrogance, you could say that this is the sort of ad that a number two provider <laughs> right. aims at the number one provider because they're trying to get something going on. And this is exactly the sort of ads that Apple used to launch uh, when they were... Th uh, thought of as a struggling company that's not doing anything uh, anything right. Samsung isn't in that same category, but uh, it's it's very it's it's a defensive uh, ad as opposed to an offensive one. It's funny. Who cares? I think it's very funny. I mean, you're right, though. I mean, Apple way back in 1984 when the Mac came out uh, treated acted as if PC users were lemmings. Remember that second yeah. year uh, Super Bowl commercial, which, by the way, in the Isaacson book they talk about, and a lot of people hated, with the lemmings going off the cliff that were PC users. Um, and, of course, the, the, in the first Super Bowl commercial where they're sitting here listening to Big Brother and was clearly PC users, they, they haven't been so mean ever since. In fact, the, the Switch commercials weren't mean. And the, certainly the I'm a Mac, I'm a PC commercials, John Hodgman was lovable. Uh, he wasn't like the barista. He's, he, he's, even with the mustache, John Hodgman still is adorable. He's always lovable. Uh, in, in, in this commercial, the Samsung commercial, the guy sitting there saying, I could never, uh, I could never own uh, a Samsung a phone. I'm creative. And his buddy says, dude, you're a barista. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the message really is get over yourself and there is a better phone out there. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, by the way, and this is a huge story, Samsung now selling tablets in Australia. Uh, they were, the uh, injunction was overturned. I guess it was a temporary injunction. The battle continues. Um, and uh, looks like uh, Samsung... Uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll continue to sell devices in the U.S. So Apple's going to continue to slug it out in court, but they weren't able to stop. Uh, they aren't. I don't know if, how Germany is going. Remember, that was another country, right? Germany was another country. They couldn't sell the Samsung Galaxy Tab. <laughs> and I don't know if they're able to sell it or not. No big loss. It's not like anybody really wants one of these. But I'm just saying, if you wanted one, you could get one now. Well, but I think that, I think that sometimes the, you know, things like these lawsuits also uh, called into question the viability of the, of the Galaxy Tab for people who are thinking about what am I going to do next. That, you know, not that was the what, purpose, maybe, yeah. yeah I mean, so, it, so it, regardless of whether they, Apple wins or loses, you know, because this, this market is moving so quickly right. that if you don't, sell that million units quickly or two million units or three million units or whatever that number is you're if you don't sell it quickly you may never get over that hump and i think that that's you know part of this is just you know throwing a little uh grease onto the onto the road right there was a good article um i can't remember where it was boy i wish i could if, if you guys remember you could you could tell me uh i thought it was a very interesting think piece saying well you know apple really made kind of the platonic tablet uh and and did so almost intentionally by by saying look the platonic ideal of a tablet is this and there really is there aren't a whole lot of different ways you can make a tablet they in a sense said and we own it so <laughs> go ahead and try to make a tablet uh uh that doesn't doesn't have any so apple's yeah. apple's lawyers <laughs> said to samsung that they could make a tablet if it had a shape that isn't rectangular or doesn't have rounded corners <laughs> that has thick frames rather than a thin rim around the front surface, that the front surface isn't entirely flat, profile isn't thin, the appearance is cluttered. In other words, they're saying, if you want to make anything decent, tablet. it better not, it better, you can't look like us. Yeah. And, we, is, have, and we have, in effect, own the only way to make a tablet. Yeah, that, 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 that's embarrassing for Apple to even say that. They've been, they've, essentially, what they're saying is that our, our signature feature of our device is that it has no signature features. So if you, <laughs> right. if there's any part of your device that is unembellished, unre unremarkable, essentially we own that concept of ennui, of design ennui. That's an Apple trademark. That's a Johnny Ive innovation. How dare you? Have, I, I, got, I got a white wall over there with no picture on a hang. We have I, need to, I, need, I need to give Apple like a $7 royalty because I haven't put something <laughs> on that wall. But, but, uh, I can't blame Apple on this. I mean, they did create the platonic ideal of a tablet. Um, I wonder, though, if courts are going to say, well, you know, come on. You want us to make a crappy tablet? That's the only way we can sell a tablet is if it's crappy because yours are so good that no one can copy you. <laughs> no one can make a good tablet. 
because you own good tablets, because you, you in effect, created they, the platonic they, ideal of a tablet. If they've, they've, they've copyrighted taste. Taste, yes. <laughs> you can make something, it just can't be good, and exactly. we won't yes. sue you. Exactly. Oh, and by the way, Apple says, it's a crappy tablet anyway. <laughs> we still don't like it. Um, yeah, the problem Apple has with the Samsung Galaxy Tab is not that it's a good tablet. Let's make that very clear. Oh, well. By, uh, you will be vindicated, uh, Andy Anako, because the arbiter of all things design, Jacob Nielsen, of the Nielsen Norman Group, who is a UI, a web uh, uh, interface expert, a UI expert. In fact, uh, he contracts himself off at hundreds of thousands of dollars to help people understand user interface and make their sites more accessible. Yeah, he, he wrote one of the definitive books on website. I think it was called On Web, web Usability, the, the, the blue and green book. I, right. I own a really great book. Yeah has said that the Kindle Fire is <laughs> a car wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I've, you know, it's the first time I've seen him do, a, in effect, a review of a product based on its usability. I don't think he's ever done that before, at least not that I know of. Uh, but in this case, uh, Jacob Nielsen, everybody can be happy uh, to know. I like the Kindle. T it made me feel like an idiot. But uh, <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to argue with Jacob Nielsen, but... Uh, I'm apparently an idiot for liking the Kindle Fire because it's just the worst piece of crap he's ever seen. Well, I'm see if well, I can. What's your experience? Because I I, I uh, haven't picked one up yet. I, I really actually want to get one um, to test. And you, you you do like it? Do you like you like the interface? I think I mean, it's you, fantastic. Do you use it a lot? How much do you use it compared to your iPad? Oh, I brought it to France, not the iPad. Uh, and the thing is, I I hardly use my iPad now that I have an Air. Now mm -hmm. I've always had an Air. Um, uh, because I just want a keyboard. I, you know, look, it's not... If the question is iPad or Fire, get an iPad. But if yeah. you're looking for a, ta a simple, inexpensive tablet, uh, I think the Fire is not bad at all. That's not, I know, it's fake I, phrase. It's well, not bad. I think, I, I, th I think it's actually good. Uh, I don't think it's... Uh, I don't even think that it's good enough for its cost. I think it's actually a good tablet. Oh, I thought uh, you hated it. it. But, Oh no no I like I, I like it a lot. Oh, As a okay. matter of fact, a lot of people have been every every time someone every time like uh, a Jacob Nielsen comes out and says bad things about the fire, or every time there's a study saying oh they're getting a, a, a whole uh, Amazon's getting a whole bunch of returns, I'll get like two or three people on Twitter saying so are you going to admit you were wrong when you said that you personally think it's a good tablet? Saying like, no, I still think it's a good tablet. Oh, I'm it's so just sorry. A, a different opinion. Uh, oh no, it's, it's you and I, I are I in just, agreement then. Uh, we we agree. I think it's uh, I I've, when I reviewed it a few weeks ago, I thought that. Uh, it's not a competitor to the iPad. I think it's a good counterpart to the iPad. Not like anyone would ever want to own both of them at the same time, but there are people who don't have $499 to spend on an iPad or they can't justify $499 to spend on a tablet. And for that, taken as a whole package, I think that uh, the $199 Fire is a really, really good deal uh, because it'll give them the, the... The analogy I keep coming up with is that when... Uh, Apple decided to come up with a commercial response to the netbook. They didn't build another netbook. They looked at the features that people were responding to and that were making it into such a success, and they built a new device that sort of uh, triggered those same sort of responses. I think that the Fire is the, has the same relationship with the iPad in that it doesn't try to be the iPad, but it tries to satisfy the same things that the iPad satisfies for so many buyers. Again, there are, there are a lot of rough edges. I think that I mentioned almost all of them in my review, that the interface is not as responsive as it should be. The physical design has some really clumsy oversights on it. Like the sleep switch is right. It's, yeah, it's hard to find good. the... It's hard. I had to turn... Every time I, 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 I hand the fire to someone who's never held one before, they have the exact same initial reaction that I did when I took it out of the box, which was to turn it over and over and over in their hands looking for the power <laughs> switch. And then when they finally find it, as they're holding it, they will inevitably cause it to go to sleep because they happen to have their hands like right where that little button is as they're holding it up. Uh, so there are definitely a lot of uh, rough edges that need to be uh, sanded off, but taken as an entire solution, I think it's a very, very nice thing. Now, in the, in the couple weeks since it was released, uh, Barnes & Noble came out with the Nook, uh, Nook tablet, which in many ways addresses the problems that people uh, have been having with, uh, with the Fire. It's a lot zippier. Uh, the web browser is, when it's 
in many in many situations, not most situations, it feels faster. The interface is less cluttered, uh, and when you tap a button, it always highlights to make sure that you know that oh, you've just, you you don't need to tap this button again. I promise you that I'm actually working on this, and it's actually uh, more responsive and, and and faster. The difference is that. It's not hooked up to that really great constellation of services that the Kindle Fire is hooked up to. It's uh, the Barnes and Noble device is really good for uh, newspaper. Excuse me, really good for books, for magazines. Man, they're doing a much better job than Barnes and uh, than uh, than uh, Amazon in creating magazines that are actually formatted to fit a, a seven-inch uh, form factor and actually work. But if you want to go beyond that, you really can't hook up with uh, your downloadable movies. You really can't hook up with uh, TV shows and stuff like that. They've just, uh, it does come with a Netflix app, it does come with a Hulu app, but that's not like what you can do with the Fire, which is to simply decide that I want to have three episodes of, uh, of, uh, of House to, to watch on my flight, and then three seconds later you've got them, they're downloadable, and you can actually use them not just on the Fire, but on pretty much any other device that you have. So taken as a constellation of things, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, the Fire. I apologize for uh, impugning. I sorry, I, I, I'm sorry if I, I'm sorry if I rattled on. It's just that I've been put. I've I've I've, I've had to make this defense like so, too many times over the past two or three weeks. Well, let me it's, now. Did you guys talk about this really last week? Because I realize this Nielsen article came out on Tuesday or Monday of last week. Did you guys talk about this last week at all? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I, I think that we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. So it was like, okay, no one wants to hear about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he says. Uh, it's Kindle Fire offers a disappointingly poor user experience, but his his issue is the seven inch, I think display it says fat finger problem makes mobile sites superior, and he says our testing of the iPad shows full sites work well on ten inch tablets, but uh, yeah. mobile sites are required for anything less than that. He has an interesting um, uh, statement here. He says seven inch tablets either have a glorious future or will fail miserably. Well, isn't isn't, but isn't, <laughs> bold, isn't state, the, bold, uh, bold bold statement? Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't isn't this uh, the amplification of uh, of the internet really connected to a lot to these tablets? Where none of the websites—I mean, even on an iPad, using a regular full website is fine if you're just doing basic surfing. But as soon as you have to fill a form or do anything else, you're just like, oh, I wish these guys had an app. You know, like you know, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. I wish you know, they had an I, app. <laughs> yeah, that, that had all my, yeah. you know, it, yeah. you know, I don't want to. Like, I go to. You know, I, I don't use Orbit's web page anymore. You know, if I'm going to go on my iOS, you know, I just use the... Well, I yeah. wonder, though, down the road, if people will either... You're right. I mean, the full-size website is gone or going away. They'll either have an app or they'll do a good mobile site using HTML5 that's like an app, but you go to the website and it's an app. I mean, you can there's, you could totally do that. That was funny because that was the original plan for iOS. Um, right. Anyway, I, yeah, I'm glad... Okay, so... and. Uh, Andy, I, I apologize. For some reason, I thought that you didn't like the fire. Uh, I remember defending it, but it obviously wasn't on this show. But, you know, you and me and uh, Paul Therott. I, oh, maybe it was Paul that didn't. Was it Paul that didn't? No, Paul likes it. Paul likes it, too. Yeah. Um, he doesn't like the touch. So I don't know. Well, it was Steve. <laughs> Steve well. didn't, but he had th like three yeah. bad ones in a row. So I wouldn't like it either. And on Twit, there yeah. was some... There was on some Twit, mechanics. there were some people we won't, who shall remain nameless because <laughs> I can't remember who it was. Who, and they, they didn't like it. Moving along, we're going to take a break. Come back with more Andy Anako, Alex Lindsay, our iOS tip. Do you guys have a lion and iOS tip? Is that too much to ask? I has a, I has a lion tip. He has lion, iOS. I mean, I know you're in Japan. I'm working on it. I'll give you a minute to work on it. How about that? There we go. That's and then good. I'll tell you where you can get an iPhone 4S cheap. Just in time for the holidays. But first, a word from Carbonite Online Backup. Anytime you do backup, you got to have, a, in my opinion, and I'll, I'll just say it, it's my opinion. It's got to be automatic. Come on. Do you ever remember to backup? If you have to, like, tie a string around your finger or put a reminder on Siri to backup, that's not backup. And, by the way, backup's fine to have a hard drive or a thumb drive or a CD or DVD or something that's right next to the computer. But I, I, I posit this question. <laughs> Pause it? I'm going to pause it. Ew. I guess I could have said pose. I'll pause it this hypothetical. What if there's a fire, flood, disaster, your house burns down, your people break in and steal everything, and your backup is sitting right next to the computer? I would ask you, my friends, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what do you do then? What will you do, in the words of Carl Malden? What will you do? Does anybody remember? Nobody remembers that. That's just me. That's the old American Express ad. Carbonite. Did not steal this. I did. 
If you have automatic online backup, then your stuff's safe forever. And, and by the way, the nice thing about Carbonite is it's cloud storage. You can log in and see your stuff anytime. On any computer, on your iPhone, your BlackBerry, your Android phone, it's always there. And the best price, less than 5 bucks a month. Less $59 a year. Actually, I'm going to give you an even better price in a second. Encrypted, so it's private. Mac or PC, so it's safe. And when you use the offer code MACBREAK, you'll get two weeks free and two extra months when you sign up for the one-year plan, 14 months for the price of two. They do have some new plans you should take a look at. People have complained to me, it's only your internal drive, yes, for five bucks a month, but if you want more, you can back up external drives too. There's just a different plan for that. They even have multiple computer plans. They call that their business package. But go to Carbonite.com. and You can use MacBreak as the offer code for any of those plans. And you get 14 months of the price of two and two weeks free trial. It's nice to try before you buy. Highly recommend it. Back up, move forward. I love that slogan. You got to back it up to get it back. So do it right with Carbonite. I think they're... I don't. I think they're one of the last uh, unlimited backup plans out there. So, Radio Shack is going to give you a thirty-dollar discount on the iPhone 4s and the iPhone 4 starting Sunday. Just thought I'd let you know. According to Nine to Five Mac, thirty-dollar discount. Okay, you know it's still one hundred seventy bucks, but that's not bad. I guess if you sold your old phone through uh, something like Gazelle and you got one hundred seventy bucks, you'd be you'd break even. That's, of course, for a new two-year contracts. Radio Shack does have a trade-in program, which might give you enough to get the phone for free. Target, going to give you $25 back. Why are they doing this? Is it just normal holiday promotion, or are they having... Tr I mean, it's not easy to get an iPhone 4S. Lisa wanted to get one. She went to uh, the AT&T store. They said, we don't have any. We're out of stock. She went to the Apple store. They had some, but limited uh, supply. She had to get a, I think, had to get a 32 gigabyte. They didn't have any 16s left. So why promote this if you're if you you're selling them out? Because because they're not selling the hardware. They're selling the service. Ah, uh, they make the money on the contract. I get it. So they're just subsidizing a little bit more. Yeah. So they're 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 a lot they're a lot ha they're they're not trying to sell iPhones. They're I trying to it. sell customers to their own services. Okay. So that's forgive my that's where the money's coming forgive from. Forgive my stupidity. We're trying to drag you in with it. Prim it's a, right down the prim note. pulling me in. It's okay. Yes. You've been in France. <laughs> yeah, that's Here, why. have a cookie. <laughs> I've all, that rich, all those rich sauces. All those amuse bouche. My mouth is amused, but my brain dead. Uh, 5.1 iOS beta 2 pre release out. And yay! Individual f picture deletion from your photo stream. Thank you. I was getting tired of pictures of my butt showing up on my desktop. <laughs> Don't like it. Don't want to see it. You, pref you prefer to sync those manually. I want to sync those manually. You know, so you can choose the best butt shot for your desktop. Can I be honest? It's not so much the desktop syncing. It's the showing up uh, when my yeah. Apple TV... Goes into screensaver mode on my 60-inch display. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. At a dinner party with your parents. Yeah. <laughs> These were supposed to be my travel pictures. <laughs> I think. I think it does show the fuzzy lines that Apple's drawn for that kind of feature. Exactly. I, 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 I think that people are really thinking of it not as the million mile uh, uh, sync cable between uh, your, your iPhone and your desktop or, or the iPad. They're thinking of it as here is the central photo album that I will always have for all my pictures. When all the features that Apple put into it uh, pretty firmly says, no, 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 we're just giving you sort of a buffer so okay. that if you need to grab a picture, we'll keep it a limited number of photos for a limited amount of time. Uh, so I, I think that that's another example of Apple really not communicating well what uh, what these iCloud services are for and what, how you're supposed to be using them. But yeah, it was a, it was a feature they should have put in right away because uh, I've never, I, I've not, not, not uh, being... <laughs> I, I have no interest in what my butt looks like, Leo. Uh, I, granted, I, I'm you not. You can't the, I, see it from that side. That's all I'm what saying. Is it, what is it about the men at the head of mighty empires and powerful positions that says I must take pictures of my bikini area and no, cause a scandal I to bring me that. down? Do you fear success, no, Leo? I haven't done that. Do you that. fear success? I, I want to be in the House of Representatives. I hear that's the best exactly. way. No, uh, but really, what it is is I, you know, of every picture that I take, three out of every four are blurry, or you know, I mean, I'm not. 
a perfect photographer, <laughs> and I don't really want all the bad shots to get duplicated. I want to be able to delete it, shots and then say, okay, this is my photo stream, not the not all the bad shots too. That's right. all. Particular, particular. It's not work. It's working about. For me, it's working 70% of the way that I would hope it would, where there's so many times when I think that uh, I, I want to use – uh, I took a picture with my iPhone earlier in the day. I know that, oh, God, I want to use this in, in my blog post tonight. And I'm thinking, oh, great, I've got photo stream. I, can don't, I don't have to hook anything up. I can That's simply, nice, yes. It'll just, it'll just appear in iPhoto, and then I'll click on iPhoto, and I'll get that screen saying – uh, photo <laughs> photo stream is a service that lets you wirelessly sync photos. Well, I know that. Isn't it there automatically? <laughs> click this button to use photo stream. But aren't I using it already? Okay, I'll click on this and then suddenly, like I'll, very, very slowly, I'll see, okay, there's a picture of something I didn't care about, a picture of something right. I didn't care about, a picture of something I don't care about. It's like, can't you just like sort of push thumbnails and I can then like pull down, I want this one there right here. Oh. There you go. There you go. Is there a way to force sync it in, in iPhoto? Yeah. I mean, I guess it, right. What yeah, I mean, you, you could. Uh, I, I do think that it still needs, just for anthropological reasons, a big button that says "sync my photos right now," because right. there are so many times I'll, I, I will sit there and think. Now, I, I know that this. I only took two or three pictures. It should be dribbling in like right about now, and it's not dribbling in. So I'll give it another minute. No, it should be coming in right now. And at least if there is a button that I can physically push to say. Right now, make sure that I want to make sure you understand that I want you to sync up my photos right now. And if nothing happens after that, then I know I've got a problem that I need to solve. But this sort of thing, we're just sort of waiting for something to delivery. We have snail mail for stuff like that, for that sort of it'll get there eventually or not at all. And look how well the Postal Service is doing. Apple's supposed to be better than that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> supposed to be better than the Postal Service. Now, are you guys having any, with the current OS, are you having any issues with headsets, you know, where... You hear where the person on the other side hears an echo? Is in, uh, that is listening? not, I don't believe that's the uh, iPhone. I believe that's AT&T. Is it really? Yes. It only happens. I get it all the time. It only happens when I have my, my headset plugged into my iPhone. Oh. So if I put the headset out, it works fine. Oh, well, then that could be a hardware or so iOS It takes issue. like 10 seconds. So what happens is, is I, now I'm in the situation where I put my headset in and I call somebody. And they're like, I hear this huge echo of myself. And I go, wait, hold on. Give it a minute. Give it a minute. And then it's fine, and and it and it and and I I my theory is it has something to do with noise cancellation, where it's using, uh, it's actually using my iPhone or, or something right. um, as a you know, and it's bouncing around, and then it's realizing about five or ten seconds into the conversation, like ooh, ooh wrong <laughs> wrong dial. Um, so uh, I don't know why this would make a difference. But Jack in our chat room says check your sound check settings. I don't see why that would make a difference. That's not doing that for the uh, yeah, and, for and the I don't phone. know, but. I'll try it, but I, it's it's kind of been kind of a constant. I've had issue. that problem uh, just with AT and T, uh, but that's right. I guess echoing can be a lot of different things, and that what you obviously what you're reporting is something else. You know, it's a. Because I've gotten into the habit of just take pulling. I mean, I I'm surprised at how often if I don't know the person well. If it's someone who's and then you know a client or whatever, I just pull my head. I use my headset, which is and are you using you're using the Etymotics or are you using the Apple? Yeah, uh, you're using, using that it. that high quality, uh, yeah. hundred fifty dollar Etymotics. <laughs> yes. So I didn't think it's that. Which, by the way, if you spend hundred dollars on them, just in case you're wondering, they do not survive the wash. You'd think you'd pay hundred. Do not <laughs> wash them. That's a good idea. Even no, if you've got earwax all over them. No, do not put them in the wash, especially not in a in a in a warm cycle. Dip they a just Q tip like a clump. in. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> iTunes ten point five point two is here, ladies and gentlemen. If you've been waiting. According to Apple, 10.5.2 includes several improvements for iTunes Match and fixes an audio distortion problem when playing or importing certain CDs. None of which I have experienced, but uh, that's, that's, that's apparently uh, an issue. It is, uh, you know, it's a software update. Full download, 102 megabytes for the Mac, 66.13 megabytes for 32-bit Windows, 68 megabytes for 64-bit Windows. Boy, if you've ever used iTunes on Windows, you'd think it would be bigger than the Mac version. It's such a hog. <laughs> such a hog. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, are you guys using iTunes Match? Yeah. Uh, are, are you what do you think? Are you, still, are you still having sync problems? Oh, you know, that's a good question. Yeah. 
because I I, I I haven't I, I've I haven't installed the uh, the new iTunes yet, but I'm still working on one one or two big issues with, where my start my smart playlists are not syncing in a reliable fashion. Uh, I, I did learn t it's it's a, I'm sorry to say that I'm still learning about how to get this thing to do exactly what you expect it to do. One of the things is that I've learned and I've been telling people that part of the process is really. Going through, clicking on the music button, uh, music view of your of your library, clicking on the iCloud uh, uh, column uh, on on the list view, and carefully looking at every yes. single file you've got that yes. I, that iTunes is saying for some reason I can't get this to work with iCloud. Usually on a on a on an element by element basis, it's easy to fix all of these things. Then suddenly all these playlists will work again. I don't know why Apple decided that. You've got 112 songs in your playlist. One of them does not work with iCloud. Rather than syncing all but that one of them, we're going to make this entire playlist unsyncable, uh, which is good in that it does fly, it, it does call your attention to the problem and force you to fix it, as opposed to never seeing, never hearing that song in that playlist and never being aware of the problem. But I wish it were a little bit more vociferous in the way it worked. But I still have a problem where. The way that I always listen to my podcast is not through the podcast tab of uh, of my iPhone, but through a playlist that always automatically has my uh, most recent 25 freshest uh -huh. podcasts, no matter what the show is, no matter how many episodes there are. Automatic, and every time that I listen to it, it automatically gets removed from this playlist, and then uh, an, an, a fresher one uh, comes in and takes its place. It's been working fine for me ever since smart playlists existed, ever since podcasts existed for, for iTunes, but now it just plain don't work. Uh, I'm getting some new stuff, some old stuff. It's never in chronological order, which is which was absolutely the way that it worked every single time before. So I'm st I've gone – every time that I come up with a problem like this, especially with new software, I go through phases of – problem solving where phase one is I should be in exactly the same position as the user. I should try to figure this out on my own without getting any help from anybody. <laughs> and then there's the, okay, I'm going to give up, use the same. Uh, no, then there's, gonna, then there's the, I'm going to use the same resources that a regular user would have. Right. I'm going to go to the support forums. I'm going to Google for answers. And then comes to the, okay, <laughs> do I email Chris Breen's Mac world address or his <laughs> Gmail address? And I'm just short of the one where I start like talking to people at Apple saying, do you know who I am? Craig, what the <laughs> hell? I just, I just want to listen to Answer Me This, and it won't let me listen to Answer Me This or the Bugle or the NPR stuff. And I'm really getting sad about this now. And I don't want to be sad. I'm not a sad. Well, person I don't think by, by I don't think a, a match does podcasts, right? Or does it? I think it just well, does songs. It, it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't do iTunes match. I'm, I'm talking about uh, the changes with iCloud. For some reason, every oh, okay. time. I, I, iCloud syncing will not do this. If I were to turn off iCloud uh, uh, syncing on my device and have it sync only by copper tether, uh, it would work. Even when I sync through copper, it doesn't really work properly. Uh, so ay, it's a problem with so many layers. And uh, it's, it's the worst kind of problem, the sort of problem that illustrates your own personal ignorance, something you thought you understood. <laughs> Apparently for five years, I thought I understood how syncing I worked. But I now got there was, it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a, there's yeah. a, there was some sort of subtlety that had been eluding me for all these years. We talked Thanks. a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you guys weren't here. Um, I think uh, Jason Snell was about some tips for getting iTunes. He, he's written some great articles. Yeah, Macworld has a, has a great bunch of stuff on that. And one of the issues is uh, it not syncing songs that are uh, below a certain, I think, 96 kilobits and so forth. But it's very simple to fix that, and uh, I have. I am getting, you know, now that you mention it, I, it looks like, and I can't understand why this playlist would even be on anything. I am getting some odd, this is, this is uh, for sure not something I put on my iPhone, the iTunes artwork screensaver playlist mm. and it's got songs uh uh a bunch of songs from zion maybe maybe my kid did this i don't know <laughs> i don't know what this is um that's yeah. kind of part of the problem too i guess isn't it that uh if you have multiple people using yeah well, also know. also for for some reason so many of my podcasts now the album artwork is not the artwork of the podcast right it's now the cover art for the b-52's first album that's i've had problems as well <laughs> so it's like it, 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 it could have been worse there are uglier albums than then to see the b-52's but that's not that's not andy zaltzman that's not right <laughs> that's not john oliver that's right that's just not right uh, and Sean S. asks in our chat room you guys should do an update on ping what's the story what <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to say 
<laughs> I think I, I think that before the iOS 5 update, a, a couple of Apple engineers <laughs> went to that vacant lot adjoining the Apple campus where these little stove pipes sticking out of the ground from the from the cement bunker where they buried <laughs> the very ping and keep like throwing it like little bits of food and water. They keep throwing it a cell phone charger saying yeah. it's, it's we'll, we'll, we'll dig you up there as soon as we figure out that it's tactically convenient for us to dig you up there until then stay put ping. We could say the ping is dead. Long live the ping. No, no, no. The, no. the thing is, the thing is dead. It's, it will ping is dead. Again. The ping is dead. The ping is no, dead. Ding dong. The ping is yeah. dead. Ding dong. The ping is dead. Which old ping? Apple's old ping. <laughs> uh, any, uh, uh, what's your experience with the match? Is it working for you, uh, Alex, or uh, do I, you share I, our bitches and I moans? Have, I have not done match yet. I'm, I'm no. trying to all, I'm trying, well, my, my library on my laptop, I've been traveling a little bit, as you may have known. Yes. And, um, and my, see, that's my, why I thought maybe you would have done it. Cause it's great if you're Traveling. My, my problem is that my, my, my Mac Mini that's connected to my real library is at the house, and I just haven't really sorted out the getting it all set up. So I just want to make sure that once I do it correct once and for all, I'm going to do it next week when I get home. I'm actually going to be home for like five days, I think. <laughs> Yay, um, that's, this eggs. is your Christmas vacation is at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I got to yes. say, I'm not, I'm not having problems with iTunes Match. I, mean, I think I'm having a problem with iCloud. iTunes ah, Match is working great, okay. so much so that I was so pleased that – uh, I, I buy most of my music through Amazon uh, just because. Uh, and uh, the Amazon Downloader app will automatically, every time you make a purchase through uh, the Amazon website, will automatically download the file and install it, uh, copy it into your iTunes library. I was really, really happy to find that then iTunes Match will automatically see that, this, take this track that's been added to the library that I bought from Amazon and instantly make it available to me through iTunes Match on all my devices. So that's even like double the reason why I use Amazon for my music purchases instead of iTunes anymore. Because iTunes doesn't give me... Uh, I, iTunes will not automatically allow me to have that sort of thing where I can on any Amazon. Uh, I won't install my stuff in a cloud player automatically. I won't install my stuff uh, in other music players automatically. But I've got a really good one-way pipeline that, that iTunes Match will cover for everything else. This just in, we talked a couple of uh, weeks ago about the Sotheby's auction of the original Apple founding corporate papers, including the document getting Ron Wayne out of it from 12 days later. <laughs> The biggest, the biggest dumb move in history. Yeah, no, <laughs> you, know, you know what? He in that documentary about Jobs, uh, while they were unaccountably driving him around Las Vegas in a limousine, Ron Wayne said, "Nah, I'm fine with it. What the hell? You know, you, you well, his, his, his explanation is 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 pretty interesting. I mean, about uh, about he how they're different. Risk adverse. It, he just didn't want to do exa it. exactly. Yeah. His his uh, in the interview, he was interviewed a couple times about this, and he says that it was probably because the way that, or at least his understanding of the way the corporation was being set up, that if this thing tanked, he personally would be liable for the company. He would be he would be liable for a share of the company's debts. And having survived that before, he was really not interested in letting himself get into that kind of risk again. And the uh, the uh, auction uh, apparently the documents were uh, owned by somebody named Wayne Sadi. I'm sorry, Wade Sadi. He'd bought them from Ron Wayne in 1994 for several thousand dollars. Sold for 1.594 million dollars. Let's just oh. round it up say 1.6 million. Wow. Wow. And that's Sotheby's. That's not eBay. So you know that's not a shill buyer. Yeah. No, absolutely, it's not eBay. Uh, the the they don't say who the winning bidder was, but the phone the winning bid came via phone. It was one point three five million, uh, and then they add they tack on Sotheby's tax on twelve percent, uh, <laughs> just for fun. So wow, wow, one point three five million dollars. Somebody bid for these documents. I have a feeling it was Paul Allen. He's gonna. I don't know why. I, I see. I don't, I see. I don't know why, but I, I was. I was thinking. I was thinking Zuckerberg. Oh, Zuck could have done that. He's well. He's, I mean, if if they're if we're tossing out like famous names, I think I, I think it's more likely it's just yeah. somebody with a lot of money who we've never heard of. But this sort of person would have that kind of hero worship of that generation. Also, that kind of money where they're not going to really care so much about <laughs> about the million right. plus buttons for a couple of for a few pages of docs. Yeah. I think you I know mean, what I, I, I could. You know, I think you. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think that's exactly who bought it. I'm, I'm starting that rumor I, I right now. I could guess somebody. It was Zuck. although. Uh, I agree. I think we decided. We've all, we've come to a quorum that, that, that this is 
we, 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 we've decided that... Uh, this is the Zuck is, at work. <laughs> Zuck at work. Zuck at work. <laughs> Either that or Eric Schmidt. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. As the head of Facebook, he wanted copies of Steve Wozniak's signature. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that in his profile yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm looking at the documents. Uh, Woz signed it, Ron Wayne signed it, both normally. Jobs, lowercase, Stephen P. Jobs, all lowercase. Don't, don't know what that means. I'm sure somebody who is a handwriting analyst will have some something to say about that. I'm a, I'm a lowercase guy. Are you? I, you sign I, your well, name all lowercase? I think that's I just thought, perverted and weird. But when I actually, How about that? When I, when I actually uh, write, I can only write in capitals now. Oh. I, uh, that's about, I well, that's have, true. I, I don't know. Yeah, we're all we're all hobbled by our uh, lack of uh, penmanship. Yeah. I'm a lefty. What's your excuse? I just don't I just don't <laughs> use uh, cave walls very often anymore. Those, those muscles, those fine muscles, just aren't there. It's like <laughs> pen do well, how do I? I was testing I was testing some new uh, iPad pens. You know, like ones that you can draw on your iPad. Yeah. And I was like. And I was trying to write, like, this is a test. And I was like, what is wrong with this? It looks horrible. And I realized, oh, I just don't do this very this often. These muscles anymore. have atrophied. <laughs> I was just like, my, there's, there's pathways in my brain that have just kind of died, you know. So. Apple uh, bumps its free holiday shipping offer up to two to three business day delivery. Get shipped to your door by December 24th. Uh, this is a change. Uh, last month, they uh, said they're going to offer free standard shipping on all orders placed through the U.S. online through, through December 22nd. Apple waiving the $50 minimum, but now they're saying, no, no, two to three business days. Oh, that's even faster. I'm sorry. The free standard shipping is slow. Three to five business, two to three business days is even faster. So good. Go out and buy more Apple stuff. Uh, because it's going to get to you even faster. Apple in talks to buy Israeli flash storage company Anobit. Terrible name. Maybe it means something better in, in Hebrew. I don't know. Anobit. For $400 million. Maybe even more. It's a fabulous semiconductor company. That means they design chips, but they don't make them. And they make flash chips. Uh, apparently, the flash chips already from Anabit are already in the iPhone, iPad, and the MacBook Air. This would make sense that Apple would probably want to own that technology instead of someone else, since so much of their stuff depends on it. Doesn't doesn't it seem like Apple is just very, very, very slowly becoming vertical? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's one of those things like they just keep on buying the people who supply right. them just slowly until until they're going to be like Krupp's arms, where you have everything from the mining. We make it to all. The Yes. Yeah, the iron ore and the lumber come in at one end, and then a Mac MacBook Air comes out the other end. <laughs> <laughs> we own everything. I don't think they use lumber in the MacBook Air. Apple's Mac Store breaks the 100 million download barrier. That's the desktop app store. By the way, Microsoft last week, in a fit of envy, launched their own desktop app store. Uh, at, which is no anywhere near comparable to what Apple's doing. They're all Metro. I think the minimum price was two ninety nine. Uh, it's very strange. Um, Hundred million downloads. Is that? I'm just curious. So they came out in January. I think that's a lot slower than the iOS growth. But I but I have to look at those iOS numbers. So it took them took them almost a year to get hundred million downloads. App Store on iOS has had eighteen. Billion. Yeah. Well, different difference in pricing, and also on yeah. the on the on iOS, you don't have a choice. So right. Good point. Once again, Andy Anako for the win. Uh, have you been to your iTunes lately? The rewind is up. The best. Um, I have a question for you. <laughs> Let's go look at this. This is the best apps, the best music, the best podcasts, that kind of thing. If you go to the iTunes store, but I look, I note on the apps. The iOS apps, number one, and I'd have to agree, Instagram. Um, number uh, one app for the uh, iPhone. Um, number one, uh, let's see here, I'm in music. Let's go to apps. Number one game, Tiny Wings. That's tiny one. Wings? Number one game is Tiny Wings? I think so. Let's it's see. Tiny iPhone Tower. Tiny Tower. Oh, I'm sorry. The tiny's confused me. Tiny Tower, which is even more stupid. 
Oh, I like I that game. You like Tiny Tower? I do. It's got me, got me through it's intense just, moments it's, of, of Breaking Bad. It's going to get me through American <laughs> Horror Story as well. You're, you're playing Tiny, to, Tiny Tower while watching Breaking Bad? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just Farmville f with a with a high rise. It's just very calming and soothing, and I like the um, <laughs> the music. I like the music. Yeah. <laughs> Game of the year runner up is Tiny Wings. App of the year runner up Vid Rhythm. I like that. Band of the day, and uh, Touch Grind BMX on the game side. But at, riddle me this, and I'm pretty sure this is the case. None of these are available on any other platform than uh, iOS. Am I right? Chat room. Can no, I play tiny, tiny Wings on Android? Tiny Tower is now available on oh, Android. Oh, okay. I stand. Mm. Then I'm, and, and you know what? Touch Grind is as well. So I had a theory which was completely wrong that in order to have a chance at being on this list, you had to be iOS only. And the, my theory being that that's why Kevin Systrom hasn't released Instagram for Android because they wanted to win this. But you know what? I was wrong. And I, um, ow, slap myself. <laughs> For think for thinking such bad thoughts about Apple, they would never do that. You agree? Any uh, any uh, dissent for these uh, choices? iPhone app of the year, Instagram. I think that's pretty clear. Although Path is that is, that, is, is, gonna be is Instagram new this year? Did I? Did, is it really? Oh, that's it really a good point. Yeah, I think it came out late last year. Just barely came out late last year. Yes, because I remember so my I first post was profane, and it <laughs> and it and it uh, F, it was like uh, F this stuff yeah, and a lot of people got upset and it went to twitter because instagram has a twitter cross post and a lot of people got upset us including a school teacher who said i will i'm making my children all unsubscribe from your twitter feed leo you son of a bitch so no she didn't say that son of a gun i think is what she said <laughs> but Insta so instagram is not this year so they're, they're stretching a little bit, but other than that, I think that I feel like Instagram has been around for years. I mean, it's just it does, like it's a, it? it just owns what yeah. everybody uses. Yeah. Vid Rhythm yeah. is brand new this year and really fun if you haven't used it. And I don't know Band of the Day. Yeah. Also, I mean, it's it's, it's a Instagram is a great social community. They need to be and they should be praised for uh, having built that really popular and vociferous mm -hmm. community in just about a year. Is it the most spectacular app though? It's pretty I mean, elegant. They, what would you nominate? Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not even sure what I would have nominated instead. It's just that it's. I don't know. I, I there, 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 when when you look at an app like uh, like Flipboard for the for the iPad. Yeah, that was Whoa, just gorgeous. You had no. I think that won no last idea. year though. Didn't that win last yeah, well, year? Well, because it's 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 year old program. Right. But I'm talking about something where when you open up this app, it's like nothing you've ever really seen before. It's not just a great app in and of itself. It really does demonstrates the iPad in a way that nothing else can really demonstrate. Did it. you guys talk about Flipboard for the iPhone last week? Because that is... I believe we did. Wow. Yeah. wow. That was a, that's, a, that, that's a nice articulation. I, it's, it's not the same app, but it, when it comes... When you, when you start to shift Flipboard a little bit away from being just sort of a... Uh, thoughtless receiver of other people's feeds to know this is we have a central service called flipboard that keeps track of the things you've read and things you haven't read it's just as important to have something on this on this device that works but yeah it is it's, a damn it's, pretty it's app now how i read my news on the iphone yeah. no flip, flipboard is really it's it uh, a, a couple months ago in, in, in a very very touching candlelight ceremony uh, <laughs> it was it was awarded one of the coveted dock spots on my ipad a change yeah. that i've not made in about a little less than a year. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, this well, I love, I love it on the iPhone. In fact, this is, you can tell what I love from based on my front page on the iPhone. These are the apps yep. I use day in, day out. And Flipboard, with its iPhone app, uh, immediately moved to the front page. Just fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I know on my uh, on my iPad the Flipboard and, and on the, the the iPhone version is amazing. Uh, I like it iPad. even better than the iPad version yeah. for some reason. I just like the fact that it, that I can hold it there and and do it while I'm you know flip right. through stuff at the airport or whatever, and I don't have to pull anything else out. It's yeah, really great. It's beautifully designed. And I've been waiting for I mean almost since it came out. You just you immediately wanted to have this on right. your iPhone. Right. So you already talked about it, so I won't. But I that will I would bet that's the app of the year for the iPhone next year. Uh, although Path is awfully nice too. Uh, speaking of winners and losers, the number one book on Amazon for the year 2011 is I don't even need a drum roll. Steve Jobs' biography by Walter Isaacson. Not a surprise. I yeah. bought I bought three copies myself. Yep. 
a bit, a bit of a surprise in that it only had three. It only had like two months to get well, that's that a good status. Point. Yeah. So man, that's that is a tight. That's a, that's, that's by any definition good. a Titanic seller. Best seller of 2011 in two months. So I now does it beat the damn vampires? That's all I was caring about. <laughs> and as long as the vampires lose, we all win. We all win. Or and zombies. And zombies. Too. Zombies. They're they're on the bubble. I'm I'm still okay with the zombies. <laughs> it's the vampires that must be crushed. <laughs> You can even show me a good, like a really good, well-written vampire story, and I'm like, please, no more vampires. Really? I feel that way about zombies. I love you're vampires. Make, you're making me think about the Twilight Twinkly vampires ah, when, you, you no. show me, when you show me a good vampire See, movie. I'm Anne Rice all the way. That's a vampire. I don't know who okay, these... Exactly, exactly. I don't See, know who this that's Taylor how, Lautner That's how bad thing. it is. It's stealing the goodwill <laughs> from the hard-working vampires yes. of literary history. Yes. The ones who just pack a lunch, they are doing the job week in, week out, expecting nothing in return <laughs> except for sustaining blood. What does it? What does a vampire pack for lunch? Uh, True children. blood, children, <laughs> small children. They're more portable. You know, I, I felt like I had to bait you guys. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Apple's new campus will put on a spectacular show every year, starting on Steve Jobs' birthday. We're seeing more and more details about the uh, spaceship and the Cupertino. <laughs> I, it's a beautiful building. Um, in late February, around the time of Jobs' birthday, pink and white plum blossoms will appear. By the way, Apple didn't make this happen. It actually is nature. Yeah, see, I, I, was, I was about to say, this, this, is, this is something like, like Kim Jong-il's like, press release will say, the glorious leader has caused the flowers to bloom in celebration of his birthday. They did plant a lot of cherry trees, though, and plum trees. He uh, has agreed to let the fruit trees be pollinated this year so that we can all enjoy rich, luscious fruit. Visitors, all hail <laughs> the celestial leader. Visitors arriving for new product introductions on Apple's campus. I didn't write this. This is uh, straight out of uh, Forbes. Visitors arriving for new product introductions on Apple's campus will walk down a path lined with cherry trees, the white blossoms contrasting with the dark green conifers behind them, a sight that by April should be absolutely staggering. They must, this is, if you think we had a slow news week, <laughs> Forbes must have had a, a really slow news week. Hidden Although from, it does make me think, I wonder who is the first like pair of Apple employees are going to choose to get married on the Apple yeah, campus. No kidding. It's, it seems like they're going to need to have a policy for that because you know that they, if, if there are people who have already decided I'm going to plunk down $250,000 uh, $250, for a ride on Spaceship One, you got to think that there are people within Apple who have already said, we don't want to build anything. We don't want to like let people in. We just want during our lunch break, we can we bring, can we have our, our friend, uh, another AMP Apple employee signed in as a justice of the peace for the day and just get married underneath. That I want to get married right? there. That sounds beautiful. We promise to take all the wedding photos with our iPhones, and you can use them all yes. during the big keynote next month. <laughs> We're showing off I, <laughs> wedding I'm, pictures. I'm, I'm for iOS version three. Uh, I, yeah. I do remember yeah. when Jobs pitched this to Cupertino City Council. He talked a lot about we're going to add. There are going to be more trees here than there ever were before. And of course, the heritage of that area is as prune orchards um, in that in that particular area. Apple employees, again from Forbes, will enjoy gardens, a fountain an open-air amphitheater, and a dining terrace nestled among apple orchards, a grove of apricot trees, and stands of plum trees. Cherry trees will be dotted throughout. We will also be planting 4.8 miles of 18-foot-high picket fencing so that <laughs> none but dare. apple people can gaze upon this beauty. <laughs> well, I think it is inside the ring. So right. you got to be in, literally in the circle of trust if you want to see the trees. <laughs> a little bit like Marie Antoinette saying, I hope that all the peasants appreciate how wonderful this gold, solid gold bed I sleep in every night is. It is truly a wondrous bed. The finest craftsman of all of France went into its construction. It's funny that you should say that. Two days ago, I was gazing upon Marie Antoinette's bed. Ah. At Versailles. Right. How was Marie? Did you try it? I did not try it. Uh, you know, Marie or the bed? Hey, hey! Oh, <laughs> a lot of people tried. Uh, the uh, the bed, both both Louis and Marie Antoinette's beds uh, are public chambers, uh, and they have a balustrade, you know, like a railing, so that the courtiers could stand outside the railing and watch the king and queen sleep. But as far as I could tell, the bed was not solid gold. A lot of, you know, it's very deceptive. It's all gilded wood. Just saying. 
Hey, by the way, Leo, what, how was LeWeb? We, we, we oh, actually... I didn't mention LeWeb. Oh, well, we'll mention LeWeb, and then we'll get to our iOS picks, our yeah. picks, all of that stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, LeWeb was great. Louis Lemur and his wife Geraldine put this together every year in Paris. Um, and uh, I hope you saw some of our coverage. Among others, Apple people will be interested in, in an interview that we did and is now on our Twit Specials feed, is that right, of Jean-Marie Hulot, who was CTO at Next and later at Apple. Uh, and in fact, I asked him and he said he confirmed it. He was the guy who in 2001 said to Steve Jobs, you know, you will be doing an iPhone. Well, I don't think he called it the iPhone, but you will be doing a phone. You will have to do a phone. And Jobs, he told me, Jobs said, no, come on, Jean-Marie, you're kidding me. And he said, no, you will have to. And uh, later, they I think at that time, they may have started work on it. Um, Jean-Marie Hulot was, there is, there's the interview. You can find it at twit.tv. Uh, his current project is something called Photopedia, which is kind of a Wikipedia for photos. It's very cool and looks great on the iPad and on the iPhone, so I recommend it. But uh, he also said that he, when he first came to the U.S., lived with Steve Jobs for many months. And I tried to get him to say something bad about Steve Jobs, and he would not. He said, you know, I never had to work with him as a manager. He might have been difficult to work with as a manager, but he was a great friend and a uh, uh, um, really Im impressive uh, intellect, I believe, he said. It was hard to tell he was speaking French. <laughs> so, no. Jean-Marie was very interesting. But we had a lot of great interviews. It was really fun. We had a studio off to the side. Uh, and a lot of very interesting people came through, some great startups, a lot of iOS stuff. And I think that, you know, there were a number of big announcements. I think the web is increasingly going to be an important, one of the um, key important conferences. We'll probably go back again next year and, and cover it again. But uh, Path, uh, Flipboard's phone application, Evernote announced two, two new applications. Spotify made a big announcement, which we haven't mentioned, but they're going to start doing radio, Pandora-style radio in the Spotify app which I think is going to be a very important feature for them going forward. Uh, Daniel Eck was there from Spotify. Uh, of course, all the news went to um, Google's Eric Schmidt, who announced that half of all TVs sold in 2012 would have Google TV in them. I, I don't know why there wasn't raucous laughter in the audience when he said that. They were very respectful. Was it sort of like a James Bond villain style threat? <laughs> I don't know what the idea was. Later, uh, want later. To protect the other half from, from Google TV. <laughs> there was a wild deposit eight trillion dollars. <laughs> later, Google's uh, uh, PR people said, "Well, I what did they say? They couldn't. Um, they, there was no. There was a lot of silence like, when he would say things, and then people would just go, huh? And there'd be like faint applause. <laughs> hmm. Well, the French are known for their sanguine uh, dispositions. They're very calm." Also, Drinking before 10 a.m. So, <laughs> oh yeah, they were wine. This is the best thing about LeWeb. They serve a, an amazing uh, meal all the time. There's food and there's wine all the time. There's coffee and wine the whole time. So it's a great conference to go to if you want to get sloshed, sloshed and and uh, and, hyper and caffeinated. <laughs> a lot of wide awake drunks there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, it's a great conference, and I really want to thank Luik and. Uh, and his team, because it was it was a lot of fun, and they uh, invited us there to cover it. And because of the time difference, all of our coverage was here was like five a.m. to nine a.m. Pacific. Yeah. So probably a lot of people mm -hmm. didn't see it, but you can go back on twit.tv and see all of the uh, all of the interviews. Yeah, there's three specials. Three specials. Mm -hmm. three and then time. did we put the Kevin Rose uh, interview yep. that we did they're with Sarah Lane? The, they're within the special. In the yeah. special? That's yeah. the one on stage that we did? Yeah, and oh, also good. her interview with Airbnb. Airbnb. And, and your interview, too. With Luik. Yeah. Okay, good. They're all there. Yeah, so well worth seeing if you haven't seen those. Twit.tv, uh, it's, uh, it, or it's in the specials feed if you subscribe to that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, iOS, Lion, and Tips, and uh, Picks of the Week as well. But first, a uh, word from our friends at Ford. When I, when I got to the parking structure, there I noticed some new Ford vehicles up there. We got a Fiesta, a Focus, and who has the Mustang? I didn't see a Mustang. There was a Mustang, Lisa. yeah. There was a white Mustang. Did Lisa or Tony take the Mustang? Uh, anyway, no, 20, I think Liz did. Liz already took it. 2012 vehicles. Uh, we're going to test drive them. And, of course, the Ford Sync We want to, and uh, my Ford Touch. We want to really, um, what we're doing tomorrow and the next day, we're going to get in the cars with cameras and we're going to get video of all of this stuff. So, you know, one of the things I felt kind of bad when we do these Ford commercials is, is me talking or I send you to the webpage. We want to show you. So we're going to actually uh, shoot some video in there to show you uh, the amazing Ford Sync, like the Sync services, which I don't talk a lot about, 
But I love, you get personalized alerts for weather, sports, news, stocks, even your horoscope. Personalized traffic alerts. If you take a regular route, it will tell you when you get in the car, hey, don't go that way. When you get low on gas, it shows you gas stations. You can even find the best gas prices. All of this is there in the Ford Sync. You press the button and you can ask it. Movie times. It's If you have the in-dash display, that's available. But you can also just have it read to you as you drive. Or even, and this is new. Mine doesn't do this. They will text you with this information to your phone. If you want to know more about this, go to Ford.com slash technology. And if you are a Sync user, see, maybe this is, I got to go to the site. Ford.com slash Sync will let you personalize those services. This is all available in the new 2012 Ford Focus, which we have. And there's one waiting for me. I took a picture of it and put it on my path and my Foursquare. Can't wait. And my Facebook, I'm excited. Ford.com slash technology to learn more. And we thank Ford because I've been invited at CES to go to a dinner. I'm so excited. With uh, the CTO of Ford uh, and its CEO to talk about what they're doing. Um, I will come back and let you know some very exciting stuff coming from Ford. They are a high-tech car company. Great cars, great con you know, cockpits. I, I want to call it a cockpit. Ford.com slash technology. It is time. I have given you as much time as I can, Alex Lindsay, for an iOS tip. There he is with his iOS device. Yeah. So, so the uh, so you know one of the cool things about the the new uh, with the iPhone or iOS five is that you can of course take pictures with your volume button. Uh, but but one thing that people people don't know is that you can actually use the volume button on your headset. So if you're looking for something where you can tether it. So it's a lot of us, when we take photography, you might want to be able to put this on a tripod uh, or um, be able to have it in one place and be able to fire it in another. And uh, so you can actually have tethered firing from your iPod. I'm not going to take my headset out because the headset that I'm using right now is the one you're <laughs> to. So, um, but, if you, but if you actually put your headset in and you have volume buttons on the headset, this little Edemotica has that. Uh, uh, this is uh, something that you can actually just use the volume button. And it'll take a picture uh, with, your, with your iPhone, which is kind of nifty. Uh, for those of you who always wished that you had tethered photography on your iPhone. That's a very, that's, that's actually a kind of, Su neat surprise, right? That that works. Yeah. I love and just that. think you could hide your iPhone somewhere, and then you could be sitting somewhere else, and you could take a picture of you know. There's whatever. by the way, there's the uh, the focus <laughs> that I'm waiting for. Uh, here's a picture on my. See, that's gonna be nice. I can't. Wait. Ooh, look at that. You're Is that slick. Up? Yeah, I'm gonna get that for the week. <sighs> and then if I could slide over, which I can't, because the iPhone hasn't yet developed that 360 degree photography capability that'll be in next year's iPhone. I could show you the other cars. They're over there. You know, I think I think I think it would be really great for many of the hosts on your show. <laughs> Alex, about. if you were here, you know what? You're just not here, dude. If you were here, you would be. In fact, we would be get putting you in one of these cars because Brent. We're gonna put Brent by in the back seat. He's gonna do what they call a French over, right? Isn't that what they call right. it? Do you really want to say that? <laughs> All right. Oh, hey. Quit after dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's where. You see it all the time in the in the the guy with the camera sitting in the back seat shooting the driver like that. It's called a French over, and we're gonna do French overs of all of the staff. Eileen, you're gonna do it, I hope, and uh, you yes. could show how it works with an Android phone. Yes. And uh, <laughs> and 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 so forth. But anyway, we're gonna do that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, so you have no idea how those cars would handle in New England winter weather. Wouldn't you like to know? If only there's like a solution <laughs> for that. All right, I'll talk to Ford. Which one do you want? The Focus, the uh, Fiesta. Uh, Mustang. You know what I like? like with For you? Yes. For all-wheel drive? The fee the beautiful Flex. I love the Flex. It's I'll send of, one over. I'll see what I think about it. Yeah, we'll send one over. You can see what you think about it. <laughs> Your lion tip, Mr. Nutko. Uh, actually, this is a Mac OS tip. Uh, one of my favorite, like, sort of, like, submarine features of a utility that not enough people are using. Uh, if you have ever, of course, had uh, had uh, the, you had your Mac keep track of your passwords for for you, you have been unwittingly using an app called a utility called Keychain Access. Yes. Uh, and if you go into the utilities folder, you can actually launch the app. You can look at all your keys, uh, keychains. Uh, we see all these secret pass, all, all of your passwords have been stored. Normally, it just works invisibly, uh, but it's it really is a very very cool app just for securing uh, for storing all kinds of secure information one of the features that it has built in is the ability to store secure notes where you can just type any text you want uh, and it will be just ungodly well
well encrypted and protected by your keychain password. So I use it all the time because uh, obviously this keychain file has all kinds of passwords and if I get uh, for all the different services that I use. And so whenever I need to move from one machine to another, I don't need to reprogram the new Mac with uh, all my old passwords. I can just copy this old password file, uh, keychain, X, keychain file uh, to the new one. But it also means that uh, if I need to know, well, what's the what's the number of my my, my insurance, my car insurance uh, uh, policy number? What's the, the 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 address of this place that people need? If something God forbid should happen to me, they need to get access to this. Uh, things that aren't not, aren't necessarily passwords or information that's being controlled by keychain access, but I need to have a secure place to store it so that I know that if someone were get if if my Mac were to fall into the wrong hands or if someone were to steal uh, steal it out of my house, they wouldn't be able to get access to all that information without a, uh, without either this really stupidly long password I have attached to it or without even being able to simply open the file and take a look at it manually. Uh, also, it has now, obviously, keychain access. Sorry for saying the word obviously twice. I, I'm trying to stop myself from doing that. Uh, <laughs> keychain access isn't the only app out there that's used for, uh, that can store information securely. The big advantage of it, though, is that it is an app that's going to be on every single Mac that you own uh, for the foreseeable future. So if two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, uh, you are you come across this old file, uh, of what you know to be very, very secure and very, very important information to you. Uh, it's not as though you're going to have to find a two, uh, find a two-year-old copy of an app that they stopped making a year ago to try to open it and uh, and get access to this information. You will still be able to simply open up this keychain file with the current Mac that you have, with the current operating system, and get access to it. So that's why I tend to use it as my one, as my go-to place to store information securely. I uh, I love keychain access. This is I completely agree with you. In fact, this is where I store my uh, VeriSign certificate for digitally signing email yep. and and all sorts of stuff. It really is a uh, kind of a brilliant technology that's been in the OS 10 since the beginning. I'm sure. Uh, we should do sure a bit on it. You know, for instance, you want your keychain access password to be the same as your login password because then when you log in, it will automatically unlock it. But if you do change it. You, if you want more security, you can actually have a secondary request for a login. I mean, there's all sorts of nice features. Yeah, it also it also has a really cool password generator mm -hmm. uh, that I use off off all the time, yeah. uh, where you just press a button and you, you you just tell it what kind of a password do you want. Do you want something really really secure or just a little secure? Good. Okay. Do you want something that's memorable right. or something that's not memorable? And it will give you two nicely hashed uh, English words that kind of go together that makes it very, very easy to remember this really complicated password that you couldn't have come up with, uh, with yourself, but uh, definitely exists there. And it will be stored inside the keychain so that if you do forget that your bank account's password is KJLR or right. RRF0101, if you go, if that, those 43 letters don't come trippingly off the tongue, you can always go back in and get it. It's, this is, I think people don't know about this, and it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, Launch the app, poke around in it. You'll yeah. find a lot of really cool yeah. features that you might want to use for, use for the rest of your life. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Great OS X tip. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our software picks of the week. Would you like to start, Mr. Lindsay? Sure. So I'm in, uh, I'm in Tokyo. Yes, you yes. <laughs> and uh, so I felt like it was important to you know, possibly look at a, an app that we've been using here uh, to get around. So there's a, I have a lot of uh, subway apps. I tend to kind of collect them. And this is a great one. It's called Go Tokyo. And um, it's like a, it's a little guide. And um, it's just on your iPhone. It's like $3. I got the Go Tokyo Plus. Of course, which was it's so funny that you that you the plus is only three dollars. I think the Go Tokyo is free. Um, and what it does is it gives you. I, I, some people will use a taxi in in Tokyo, but if you do, you're crazy because the train system here is probably one of the best in the world. And so, but the key is just to know what, where you are because they these stations are huge, uh, and you have to know so that you have you can search for stations. You can um, you've got a train map, a station map, and and the station maps are important because if you're in Ginza, you have to know like there are a whole bunch of ways to get out. There's a whole bunch of other lines that are going through, and you got to know which you know how to get from one to the other. And this gives you these great little maps that are on the wall here and there, but it's great to be able to sit there and actually figure it out on your on your phone um, when you're in the train, you know. I, I have to say, I always, whenever I travel, will download, I did the same thing in Paris, just as you did. I will download all of, there's always great apps for that kind of thing. Well, and, and, and what's, what's I, I, if they, if, 
you, Americans, you know, uh, pay a heavy price for being so car centric because it is such a, uh, uh, it's so awesome to, to take, uh, to take trains all over the world, whether you're in London or, or Paris or, uh, uh, Japan, not only can you get around really easily and, and, uh, fluidly, but, uh, you really get a feel for the culture. Every subway system really tells you a little bit about the culture that you're in, the the, the way that it's set up, and and the the structure. And uh, anyway, so and this is just a a really great um, little application that uh, help makes it a lot easier to uh, to get around Tokyo. And if you're ever in Tokyo, definitely don't stay in a hotel. Get into the get into the subway system. You, know, you can get so many places so quickly and so inexpensively. Uh, but you definitely need an app like this to. Uh, to make sure you know where you're going. Yeah. Wow, that's great. 500 stations, 13 JR lines, four private railways. Go Tokyo. 299 iPhone or iPad. Worth every penny. <laughs> I used a DK's, uh, uh, has some great guidebooks. Uh, and I have, there's a top 10 Paris. They, there's a big one for the iPad if you're carrying an iP iPad with you. But the top 10 Paris is great for just yeah. like, and it was all the places we, you know, we were visiting. I would just look in there and. Lots of good information, but not the Metro. There's a separate app for that. Yeah, and then I have a whole bunch of Metro ones. This one, uh, this Go Tokyo, was, was suggested by uh, Leona Lahua, who is our, oh. one of our producers. So, uh, so she's here. And so I was trying to figure out what she was. She was like doing this crazy uh, Rain Man thing. She just knew where everything was while we were going around it. <laughs> I know <laughs> everything is. What are you using in Go Tokyo? So. There are. You're right. There are a ton of Paris transit um, guides. Yeah. Holy cow. Holy cow. Andy Inotko, your uh, pick of the week. Uh, this is a really cool app for uh, for the iPhone that uh, someone introduced me to the other night when we were out to dinner at a really, really nice restaurant. And uh, the, really, the, the difference between really, really nice restaurants and, say, Five Guys Burgers and Fries is that Five Guys Burgers and Fries, they basically illuminate it with, like, magnesium. Not, not, not magnesium lamps, <laughs> but open fires of magnesium. Yeah, no, you're right. So it's, so it's <laughs> the, sort of, the sort of lighting that says, eat and get out, we need yeah. the table. <laughs> yeah. uh, this, this is a lovely restaurant where it's very, very dark, subdued lighting, and no one could read the menus, except for uh, someone at the very, very end of the table who was using a really this really cool iPad... Uh, iOS app called Lumen. And what it is, is it's a digital pocket magnifier. Wow. I've got it running here. Look All it does that. is it turns it turns on the camera and it's it's not just a it's not really a camera app. It's just designed so that you can ma it will just simply mag you, you can just use it as a regular magnifier. I've got a C I've got a DVD case here uh, uh, text so that why isn't oh God it was focusing and now it's not. I've been switching in other areas. Uh, and so not wow. only that, but you can also turn on the light. Not only that, but once you've got basically the bit of text you want to really take a look at, you can then tap the lock button. And now it's like static on the screen. Uh, so uh, now you can basically uh, uh, zoom in and actually take a closer, closer, closer look at this tiny text that you can't see uh, correctly. Uh, so uh, there, as a... <laughs> I'm sure that this is an app that I'm going to be making more and more use of as my life goes on. Oh, and by the way, you can also uh, email. You can also use this as a, as a camera. We can also, you can also send that picture elsewhere. But uh, as time goes by, I'm sure that I'm going to be using this more and more. But even the, even today, the number of times when I need to find, I'll I'll take out like some sort of like device that someone sent me. Uh, and I don't have the power adapter nearby, and so I have to look at the back of it to just find out what what to uh, what what the power requirements are. I'll find that this this company decided it would be really really funny to put that information, <laughs> print that information in 50% gray lettering on top of a 25% gray background at like two microns high, and that's the situation which I really am glad that I <laughs> I would really be glad that I have this app with me. It's only a buck ninety nine. Uh, it's definitely in that category of buy it now without any intention of ever, ever using it. And I almost guarantee you that sometime in the next three or four weeks, there will be a time where you'll just like uh, any, other, any other time in life, you're thinking, oh, dang it, this is too small. To oh, wait a minute. I have that app. What was it called again? Loom something. Oh, there it is. Hey, now I can read it. Aren't I a stud? <laughs> that would be you saying it, not me. Yes, no I am going to say that. Aren't you yes. a stud? Thank you very much. I look, that's great. I'm downloading it right now. Fantastic. Yeah. I have uh, two picks. One, a note for people who were uh, programmers or used text editors. Uh, there was a great one for many years called TextMate. Uh, it was uh, designed in conjunction with David Hennemeyer Hansen, who uh, uh, was the developer of Ruby on Rails. It was a really great Ruby programming environment. And then it just kind of disappeared. 
uh, for a while. Well, good news. Macromates has f put out a beta of version 2.0. It's not bad yet. Uh, you can get it at the Macromates website if you're a registered Mac, uh, TextMate user, which I am. Um, so there have been many good choices kind of in response to the disappearance of uh, TextMate <laughs> and its uh, creator. But uh, good news, it's back. So uh, if you are a TextMate user, you might want to check out the alpha. Uh, as they are quick to point out, uh, it has lots of bugs because it's, it's alpha, but it's certainly good news for people who have been waiting for a new TextMate. And my other pick is uh, from a guy who's going to be with us in just a few minutes. Trey Ratcliffe is here in studio to join us for a Twit Photo, one of our favorite people in the world. Forget photography. Just one of the greatest guys in the world. And I, uh, we've plugged this on iPad today, but I think I should mention this on... Uh, on this show, uh, last month, Trey came out with a new app. He has a number of great apps for the iPhone and the iPad. This is an iPad app that's absolutely free. We were talking about travel. It's called Stuck on Earth. Beautiful, beautiful photographs from all around the world and some very nice features. And apparently, if I log in with my name, I'm going to find some special Easter eggs on there, too. But I don't have my iPad in front of me, so I'll just have to take that. Uh, for granted, but stuck on Earth from Trey uh, Ratcliffe. He's of course stuck on Customs.com, and uh, just some really nice stuff. It's free, um, and you can put your own saved trips, local maps, descriptions, and more into it. But there's uh, lots of uh, content that it comes with to begin with. Uh, Trey is just one of my favorite photographers in the world. So a couple of recommendations uh, there for you. Well, we are out of time, but I am so grateful that. Uh, Alex, you got up at 5, 4 in the morning. <laughs> it's now 6 in the morning, and you might as well stay up. because your day, I missed you guys. Your day has begun, my friend. Yes. Very oh, I got lots to do today already. So. I'm so sorry. But I do appreciate your, your being here for the show. We missed you. My pleasure. Hey, and by the way, next week um, uh, I am doing a, uh, a webinar on live streaming, since I do all this live streaming. You and, are the uh, king. And it's free. It's free. It's on at filmmakingwebinars.com, and you can do a search for, you know, live streaming uh, or Alex Lindsay, and uh, you'll see it there on their website. So, um, but definitely uh, check that out. It's free. You know, all you got to do is register. It's a, uh, it's actually a go to, go to webinar. And so, um, so I'll be t walking people through some of the basics if you're trying to think about how to do this for uh, whether it's your school or your company or, you know, you want to turn, you think this might be a good business for you. I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of the things you have to think about to, uh, to do that. 1M or 2 in filmmaking webinar? I think it's 1M. Nope, it's 2Ms. Filmmakingwebinars, plural, dot com. And right on the front page there, introduction to live streaming, Alex Lindsay. So definitely check it out. Register and uh, come join me and it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, he's already, Alex has already has taught me everything I know about streaming, including, by the way, I think we're going to have to buy an Elemental. Oh, man, they are so awesome. Wirecast cool. has been crashing on us every day. Our stream dies once a day now. Uh, we have to we, re you know, restart. So I think we're going to buy one of those boxes. Has it been good for you? It's been great. You know, we use both of those. So we use Wirecast. Uh, for, uh, we're using Wirecast uh, today, actually, for the stream. Uh, there are certain things that Wirecast has that we use, you don't use, but we use, which is being able to add extra slides at the end if there's, you know, things we're doing transitions for, switching entire pipelines in the back end. And so there's a lot of flexibility that we get out of Wirecast um, that we love. Uh, but as far as a, uh, you know, a big, heavy, uh, iron when it comes to streaming uh, the elemental uh, is, is pretty amazing so we, it, we like at it that all. price it better damn well be <laughs> 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 yeah, I got my I got my checkbook out yeah it's not it's not ten dollars but it's uh, it, no. it, if you're doing a lot of streaming it and, and you just want something that is you know once again you get to a certain point we got to a certain point where we just had to start you have to have it and some iron yeah yeah so that's what, uh, I guess that's what's in our future. It'll be a great Christmas for Leo <laughs> and his whole family when they find an elemental under the tree and nothing else. Not a, not a, not a, not a good Christmas for his friends and relatives, all of whom will be getting. <laughs> a donation has been made in your yes, name. A gift. To the Twit Elemental. <laughs> a gift human for, fund. to streaming. <laughs> Andy Anako, thank you for being here all the way from Baston, Massachusetts. Andy writes for, of course, the Chicago Sun-Times, where he is the king of the hill. And it comes to technology, you can also find him at cwrb.com. Yep, 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 yep. And his review of uh, the Kindle Fire. All positive. Well, mostly positive. Kind of positive. Mostly positive. Sort of positive.
Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you all for being here, too. We do Mac Break weekly, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC at twit.tv. You can watch live. In fact, it's fun if you watch live. You get there's a pre-show and a post-show, and there's lots of swearing that we edit out. But then, for the clean, family-friendly version, except for occasional innuendo about Marie Antoinette, you can get the download available at twit.tv as well. In fact, subscribe. There's audio. There's video. The whole thing. Twit.tv. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next week. Now get back to work. Break time's over.